So, my ex-bridezilla sister <laughs> demands that I pay for her third wedding because she can't keep a man, and she's blackmailing me. She said she's going to tell my fiancé that I can't have babies. Well, you know what? That's fine, because I have a little trick for her. I'm a college dropout, even though I used to be the brightest in class. I left college when I was on the verge of becoming a graduate, and this is not because my parents were not able to fund my education. I'll dive into that later, but I want to start my story by talking about why things are not so great with the only sister that I have. I'm older than my sister Amanda, by three years, and we used to be very close up until she graduated high school. Neither our parents nor I knew the extent to which my sister had let teenage exuberance gain a strong grip over her. I was the first to discover it when she enrolled in my college to study nursing. I was in my third year when my sister came to live with me in school. She was a freshman, but she quickly began mingling with people who were far ahead of her. There was nothing wrong with mingling with people who are ahead of you, but I noticed that those who made up the major part of my sister's friends were not her classmates, so I called her one time just to give her a bit of advice. You know, sisterly advice. I did not ask her to stop relating with that kind of people. She did, but I told her it was going to be beneficial for her if she spent time with more of her classmates, especially since she's still a freshman. Amanda told me that she intentionally befriended the people who were ahead of her because she felt that she had a lot to gain from those who had been in school way before her and her classmates. Well, her reason did sound valid and would have been valid, but the problem was that these guys she talked about were not in her department and did not offer any course that related to nursing, <laughs> nothing that she was doing. Besides, these guys were boys. I did not push the issue after all, it was just advice, but I soon noticed a change in her program. Amanda would leave for lectures in the morning and would only return the next morning, and when I questioned her why she would uh, spend all night studying at one of her girlfriend's places, besides her program changing, her dress sense equally changed. She now wore dresses that seemed to call attention to the cleavage, which she was exposing. This was a cause for concern as I knew something was going amiss. My sister repeated the same thing one day, and when I asked, she gave the same excuse of sleeping over at a friend's house after they had studied together. Her story did not add up. If she had stayed up all night studying, then why did she look like she was coming from a party, and why did I smell alcohol on her breath? I had lectures to attend that day, but I suspended it so I could get through to her phone when she was asleep. Amanda took her bath and went straight to the bed, and I immediately carried out my plan. My findings, well, they were shocking. I saw the text of a guy uh, dropped for her that same morning, where he was telling her about how he had enjoyed himself the previous night. I knew then that my sister did not spend all night studying. My heart was shattered because I just discovered my sister had a lover, and when she was supposed to be as serious with her studies as the other freshmen... But that was uh, only the beginning. I kept on going through her phone, and I saw that she did not just have one boyfriend. I read a chat that she had with a female friend, where she mentioned three different guys and claimed that she didn't love them, was just having a bit of fun. So I lost it. I slapped my sister awake, and Amanda jolted out of her sleep as a result. She looked at me with curiosity in her eyes as to why I've woken her up in the manner, but I just stood there staring at her. I asked her where she had been the previous night, and she wanted to lie again, so I shut her up. I began calling the names of these guys that she was involved with and even read out the text that she had sent that morning to him. I was still at it when she jumped to her feet and snatched the phone from me. She shouted at me and asked me to stay out of her business, as it was her life. Well, I told her she was wrong because she was my younger sister, who was staying under my care and I was supposed to look after her. There was nothing I could say or do that day that would make my sister listen to me, so I did the only thing that I felt was best, getting our parents updated and involved in the situation. Our parents did not take it lightly with my sister. They scolded her in hopes that my sister would change for the better. Well, their hopes never mounted to anything because even though my sister was back on her lifestyle, especially as she still lived with me, I knew that she still indulged in her reckless ways. 
I did not raise the issue with my parents again, though, because there was nothing that they could do. My sister was already 18. My sister bore a grudge against me ever since that day, and I began seeing a guy in my final year. He was among the set that had graduated before me, and we seemed to be in love, and I thought him to be responsible because he had futuristic plans about our relationship. Well, we talked about how we would both build our home and all, and Amanda discovered that I was seeing somebody when he came to the apartment to see, and she confronted me right there in his presence. She claimed that I'm being hypocritical by reporting her to our parents when I did worse behind closed doors. My lover was embarrassed, and he asked to take his leave. Guys, my sister's craziness only got worse after my lover left. I tried to explain to her that her situation and mine were far different. She was a freshman, who was already sleeping around with guys and therefore neglecting her studies, while I, on the other hand, was a final year graduate student who was dating a guy who wanted to get married to me. Amanda did not see it that way, but I did not care, because my guy planned on coming to see my parents once I graduated so we could make the whole thing official. Amanda's desire to see Hurt was finally granted when I got pregnant with my boyfriend. I called him, told him about the pregnancy, and he did not respond the way I expected. He told me he was not ready to welcome a child at that point and asked me to get rid of it and never get in touch with him again. I was heartbroken, to say the least. I did not fancy to get rid of a baby, but I knew that if I did not act fast, the pregnancy bump would show and alert everybody that I was expecting a child out of wedlock. I didn't tell anyone about it. Not even my sister who lived with me suspected I could be with a kid. After I'd spent days without coming up with any other befitting solution, I decided to get rid of the pregnancy. The procedure was carried out and I returned to my apartment, where I began having complications. It got so serious that I almost lost my life. Amanda came back and found me groaning in pain and she initially ignored me till I passed out. She raised an alarm and had me taken to the hospital where it was diagnosed that I had damaged my womb, and I would never give birth to a child as long as I lived. Amanda wasted no time in calling to inform our parents that their daughter, whom they held in such high regard, was a prostitute behind the scenes and has damaged her womb. My parents took me back home after a few days at the hospital and even though they avoided expressing their displeasure to me as I was going through a lot of physically and emotionally, I could tell that they were very much disappointed in me. My sister came home from school to spend a few days at home. This was someone who had tried avoiding home as much as possible because she claimed our parents made the home feel like a cage. Well, her only reasoning for coming home was to rub the whole thing in my face. The humiliation was too much for me to bear. I could not go back to school after that because the neighbors who had helped my sister take me to the hospital after she raised the alarm told her that I've been living a dirty life on campus. My name, my image was tarnished. My parents encouraged me to look beyond the shame and go complete my studies, but I refused. Well, guys, this is how I became a college dropout. I stayed back at home and channeled my brain power towards becoming a blockchain engineer. You don't need to go to college for that. A few years passed and I remained in my shell. Me and my sister still lived with our parents and I shut out everything that had to do with a man, a relationship, or a marriage. I did not relate to those of the opposite sex beyond business. My parents suggested I go for counseling and all, but I insisted I was okay even though I was not. I questioned who would want to get married to a barren woman like me. There was a very high chance that any man who heard that my womb was damaged would automatically conclude I was someone I wasn't who had damaged her womb while plying her business. A time came when I began entertaining lots of suitors that I did not know what to do. My parents encouraged me to not give love a chance and I did. I began dating a guy. He was nice in every way and I did not have any unrealistic standards, expectations, or requirements because I saw myself as below par in the choice of a wife. Things between this guy and I got serious, and I sensed he wanted to take things to the next level, when he informed me that he wanted to meet with my family. I initially refused, but when I told my mom about it, she encouraged me to invite him. My parents told me that if he proposed marriage, then I would make my condition known to him, otherwise it's best I keep quiet about it. 
This guy came to the house and met with everyone. My younger sister Amanda was at home when this guy came around. He told my parents that he was dreaming of starting a family with me. This was the first time he was saying it to my hearing, and it's not like I did not know the whole thing was headed to that direction. My sister immediately did something that I still hold a grudge to this day. Amanda noted it's great he was willing to get married to me despite my being barren. She then asked the measures we wanted to use to get kids. This guy immediately turned and looked at me in a horrified manner. He asked if what my sister had said was true. I didn't answer. I just left the table in tears while my sister gave him the answer he was looking for. He left and never called or replied to my text after that. My parents were angry at my sister, just as I was, and we all confronted her later that night. Amanda claimed that she felt he was already aware of my situation, and besides, she had told the truth. Nobody was against her for saying the truth, but it was not her truth to share. I knew my sister purposely did that. She just did it to wreck any chance of me getting married. The strife between us steadily grew worse afterward, and I was earning very well, so I decided to move out of our parents' home and stay on my own. Amanda, on her own, was not working, even though she had studied nursing, and she still was dependent on our parents. I was at my place enjoying life without my sister's provocation when my mother reached out to me to come over to the family house for something very important. She emphasized my coming to the house, but she refused to tell me the reason over the phone. I got to the house and found my parents seated on the couch while Amanda was sitting with her arms locked around a handsome guy. A few seconds that I could tell the guy was rich. Amanda almost overdid the PDA thing, public display of affection. The moment I entered the house and I knew she was trying to provoke me. Everything she ever did when in my presence always centered on that. My father informed me that the young man seated with Amanda was her fiancé. They were about to get married. It meant my sister was already engaged before then, and I did not smile or say anything because I was not in the mood to pretend. The pain of what she had done to me was still heavy in my inside, and we went to go ahead to have lunch together. Amanda was the one talking most of the time. She spoke about how she and her fiancé had a difficult time settling the number of kids they wanted. She claimed she wanted at least four kids, but had to settle for two. I, I just knew it. The whole children thing was another ploy to remind me of my condition, and it worked. I stayed till lunch was over, but that was it. I never showed up again. Not even at my sister's wedding, and I believe you perfectly understand why. I could show up at the wedding, and my sister would choose to embarrass and ridicule me in front of the whole crowd. That's Amanda for you. Well, I brought my sister her wedding gift two months later, after her wedding had packed up. The news of my sister's separation from her husband came as a surprise to everyone, but it was really pleasant to me. I'd learned about it from a friend of hers, and the moment I heard she was back at her parents' home, I quickly wrapped up an empty box in a gift wrap and acted like I didn't know what happened. I headed straight for their house. Yeah, I guess I could be that type of person, too. I got to the house and apologized to Amanda for not showing up at her wedding, but noted I'd gotten her a present. Amanda hissed and snubbed at me, and Mother then told me her marriage had collapsed. <laughs> I laughed my heart out and nearly collapsed myself. I made a mockery of the whole thing till Amanda came at me with nothing but utter rage. We busted out fighting, and I just let every emotion I had out. She has our parents to thank for saving her that day because her face would have been unrecognizable after I was done with her. My parents tried to make us bury the hatchet after that, but all I could promise them was that I would quit mocking her, but we could not become as close as we used to be years back. Besides, Amanda's on her path, and she's not ready for peace. She swore that she would never see me as a sister ever again. Well, you know what? That's okay by me, Amanda. An opportunity came for her about a year later, and she got remarried for the second time. I was at the wedding this time, and it did not last for a year. <laughs> her husband had informed my parents that Amanda cheated on him. Well, once that type of lady, always that type of lady. This second divorce affected my sister from what I heard. My parents claimed she broke down for a while, and I did not pay a condolence visit or even send a take-heart text. She was indeed the architect of her misfortune. 
How could one cheat on her partner in a marriage that was not up to a year old? It serves her right. I mean, it's been a year since after my sister's second failed marriage. And a guy by the name of Maxwell has picked up interest in me. I'm doing my best to ward him off, but he seems determined. <laughs> He's recently told me he would love to spend the rest of his days with me, but I'm yet to give him a reply. It's not like I don't like him. I have fallen for him, but I fear his feelings would change once he learns I cannot carry his child in my womb. I'll be going to visit my parents tomorrow, and I'll tell you about the situation of things. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. Well, I have some exciting news for you. This story is not over yet. We have a few updates to hop into, and we might get a bit of revenge. Anyways, if you guys are new to the channel, I want to welcome you and let you know that if you're not subscribed to the channel, you might just miss out on a juicy story. We post daily stories here on Mr. Redito's animated channel, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Let's jump into updates number one. I visit my parents like I said I would, but my mother was very excited when I told them that someone had indicated his intentions to get married to me. They asked if I loved him and I broke down in tears while affirming that I did. My parents understood that I was afraid he would not want to go ahead with me once he learned that I was barren. They advised me to get honest with him and let him make the decision, but I told them I could not. My sister Amanda walked in as I was telling my parents it would be difficult for me to bring Maxwell up to speed about myself. She made a comment about that, and though I did not hear what it was, I knew it was sarcastic and it was directed towards me. My parents knew she was there to pick on me, and they equally knew a serious fight was going to break out if they did not intervene, so they immediately walked her out of the place. It took a while before I finally decided to go with my parents' advice of telling Maxwell I was barren, but I would equally go ahead to break up with him, since I knew it's what he would likely do. I called Maxwell and rearranged a meeting at my favorite restaurant. He came with a look of optimism, poor guy. I began by telling him that I had carefully thought about everything and I loved him, way more than he could know. Well, at that point, his optimistic facade turned to a big smile, but it immediately changed into that of bewilderment when I told him that I could not get married to him. Well, he was confused, and he could just not make sense of what I said. Money was not going to be an issue for us since we both earned a good amount. Maxwell asked what was stopping us since we had the chance to live comfortable lives after we were married. I told him. That the comfort wasn't the issue, but the happiness. He looked at me quite puzzled. Then I opened up to him and, you know, I told him how I lost my womb in my final year of college. Maxwell just stared at me while I spoke and I didn't know what to expect. After I was done, he held my hand and said he was glad that I told him about it before we got married. Because he would have been shattered if he found out after we married. Maxwell then noted that my barrenness was not an issue since there were other options for childbearing than, you know, we could adopt. He pulled out a ring, dropped down on a knee, and officially proposed to me right there. I cannot describe how I felt. This guy had seen my imperfection with his own eyes and was still willing to spend the rest of his days with me. Nothing was standing in the way. I immediately said yes with tears flowing down my eyes, and I informed my parents about it, and they were super happy. Maxwell would be coming to officially see my parents next week, and we would then start the marriage prep. Update number two. The wedding preparations are underway. Maxwell came to visit my parents, and they prepared for his coming. Amanda saw the preparations that my parents were making and wanted to know who the important guest was. My parents told her that it was my fiancé and sister uh, was surprised that I was already engaged. My parents, seeing her surprise, warned her to behave herself when Maxwell was around. But I told my parents I didn't even want her to be there. Not for Maxwell's visit, not for my wedding, or anything. Amanda, on her own, noted she wasn't even interested anyways. Maxwell came to visit, and we were all having lunch without my sister. She left the house and only responded to Maxwell's greeting of, Hello. Maxwell and I were talking some days later, and he began talking about how he felt pity for my sister. He noted it must be hard on her as she was a two-time divorcee. 
So I simply asked him to not bother, and he said uh, he said something was amiss. Maxwell then noted that some of his single and eligible friends would be attending our wedding, and my sister could once again have a shot at love. I told him she could not, and he marveled at the certainty which my words portrayed. He asked why I was so sure, and I told him it's because my sister would not be attending my wedding. Maxwell looked at me like, well, he knew my sister was not working, and so he asked what kind of engagement she would have that could keep her from attending her own sister's wedding. Ah, I told him, there's nothing keeping her from it, but I made my point to her that I did not want her there. It became crystal clear to Maxwell at that point that all was not well between my sister and me. He asked why I had done that, and I explained to him how my sister had ruined my chances of getting married a few years ago. Maxwell asked me to be the mature one by initiating peace with my younger sister. He asked me to go back to Amanda and extend an invitation to her. He even asked me to make her my maid of honor. Hmm, how ironic. Asking somebody who knew nothing about honor to act as a maid... I wanted to argue with Maxwell over what he was asking me to do, but decided to exhibit signs of a submissive wife. I went to the house and personally asked Amanda, right there, to personally attend my wedding. Oh, and not just doing so, but also be my maid of honor. I made her understand that this was not an olive branch of peace, but me simply following my fiancé's request. One which I was certain he would not have made if he knew who she was. Amanda said she was sure Maxwell would not be getting married to me if he truly knew that I could not give birth. She then said it was a pity he would only discover it once I've tricked him into getting married. I did not reply to her statement, but as clear as day, how she felt Maxwell was still in the dark about things. Update number three. I'm a happily married woman, but my sister's trying to rob me of my peace. After I swallowed my pride and asked her to come be my maid of honor, she did not show up at the wedding. I didn't care. <laughs> Maxwell and I went for our honeymoon, and it was two months long. Sixty days, baby. We could stay away for as long as we wanted because I don't have a physical office position where I work, and Maxwell's the CEO of his firm. So... I received a call from my parents two days after we returned, and they asked me to come to the house because my sister had noted that she had something very important to announce to us. So, I get to the house. It turned out the reason my sister had gathered us together was to tell us that she was engaged. She did not just announce the engagement, but she began talking about how elaborate the wedding was going to be, and how they would go to the Maldives afterward to observe a three-month honeymoon. <laughs> I'm sure the only reason she was saying all that was because she wanted to best my wedding and, of course, best my honeymoon. I knew she was pained because of how elaborate my wedding was. I, I was okay. After all, she and her fiancé would be the ones to cover the cost. <laughs> or so I thought. Amanda showed up at my house a few days ago, and I was quite shocked. My husband wasn't around, and I wanted to be hostile but decided against it. I ushered her into my home out of curiosity to know why she had come. Amanda walked in like her presence in my home was a privilege to me. She sat down before I could offer her a seat and I just held myself back just to see where all this was heading to. Amanda did not beat out the bush. She straight away said that the cost of her wedding and honeymoon was around $30,000 and I was going to foot the bill. <laughs> yeah, right. I looked at her in shock. Who did she think she was waltzing in my home and making such a demand? I did not bother reacting. I just told her to stand up and get the heck out of here. Amanda said if she left without the assurance that I was going to cover her wedding, then I could be certain that my marriage was as good as toast because she was going to reveal to my husband my infertility status. Ah, I took a long look at her before asking her to sit down so we could have a talk. Amanda smiled like she had the bull by the horns. I told her I was willing to sponsor her wedding and the honeymoon, but she has to promise me one thing. Never, ever bring up the issue again, and she noted that she would hold on to it to the end of time. I then told her that $30,000 was far too much for me and suggested she cut down some things, but Amanda 
insisted that I've gotten a flashy wedding and she would only settle for something better. I agreed to do the sponsoring and she left my home like she had slain a giant. I, however, plan on giving her the most humiliating wedding in all of human history. Update number four. I know, I know, you guys are probably itching for this update. So yeah, my plan's finally been executed successfully. My sister before her wedding was calling me every second of the day well, to either get an update of how things were going or to place more demands on me. Amanda wanted the best of the best. She was serious about outdoing my wedding with my own money. From the baker who would bake the cake down to the chefs who would prepare the meals that would be served to the people. She demanded that I hire two people who did the same thing just to ensure that one would serve as an alternate just in case somebody's disappointed. <laughs> I played along like I was following strict instructions. The kind of wedding she was expecting was only going to happen in her little head. The only thing Amanda did not let me pay for was her wedding dress, and that's because her would-be sister-in-law who made wedding dresses was willing to give her one for free. I would say I was lucky because she would have discovered my plans on time if she had asked me to come and pay for her wedding dress. Well, it would be paid for right there after she had tested it and she would then discover my reluctance to do so. The day finally arrived and Amanda waited at the house for the Bentley, which she had demanded I hired to come pick her up down from the wedding venue. Well, you know what? It was an overused Volkswagen that arrived to pick her up. Amanda called me and began shouting over the phone. I told her that something occurred to the car I hired and it wasn't available and the Volkswagen was the only available thing. I asked her, please just overlook the whole thing and come straight to the wedding venue since the guests were already here. I chuckled as Amanda ended the call in anger. It was just the beginning of her woes. Amanda was turned into a mad woman on her wedding day. She was chauffeured in an overused Volkswagen and was shocked when the driver was taking direction different from what she had in mind. She was brought to a different event center where the guest refused to go inside because it was untidy and smelled like farts. Thanks to the fart spray which I used, <laughs> Amanda spotted me and immediately confronted me. I laughed at her as I told her it was what I could afford. She wanted to get physical but was stopped by those around her. I immediately produced the restraining order that my husband and I had gotten from the police against her. I went ahead to inform her that my husband and I were expecting a child via our surrogate. My statement meant that my husband was aware of my condition. Amanda cursed me in anger and frustration as I left the scene while those around, her would-be in-laws, tried comforting and encouraging her to use the venue, you know, that way since nothing could be done at this point. Well, I learned the guest went home on an empty stomach because I did not arrange any food. So Amanda ends up with a restraining order over her head. I couldn't even imagine being in OP's position, having to deal with such a sister to the point where you're being blackmailed for something that you can't even help. It's ridiculous, it's toxic, and you know what? Amanda got everything she deserved. She had a horrible wedding, her significant other doesn't want anything to do with her, and everybody in the community lost any respect that they had left for her. But at the end of the day, I want to know from you guys, do you think what OP did to the sister for the wedding and ruining it, did it justify it? Drop your thoughts in the comment section down below, guys. I would love to hear from y'all. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories like this every day. If you guys do enjoy this sort of story, consider checking out my other channels as well, and make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Have a great day, guys. I hope you enjoy it. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.